So this is a huge treatment shift in the landscape of schizophrenia. We have not had any uh, new classes of medications for this disease state in 70 years. So we've been doing the same pattern of creating new antipsychotics that work off of just D2 receptors, which is actually a postsynaptic solution to um, our dopaminergic pathways. And with schizophrenia, we know that this is actually a presynaptic dopamine problem. And this is the first realm of agents that actually works on a different mechanism of action than typical D2 receptor blockade in all of our first and second generation antipsychotics. So it's really exciting. Yes, so many of our antipsychotics that we currently use don't always target the whole conglomerate of positive, negative, and cognitive symptoms that is demonstrated in schizophrenia. And so you have multiple agents that you're using. Specifically cognitive impairment, there's not a whole lot that we can do around that in our current state of medications. Now with the muscarinic modulators, we actually have some data around uh, cognitive improvements. And I think with working with this new mechanism of action and, and the several that will come after that, hopefully, we'll see some cognitive improvements in those with schizophrenia as even a treatment option. But it it can work on all three domains. Uh, it was seen in the clinical trials for uh, Cobenfi, um, some improvement in those domains. And that's because it's working in different areas of the brain um, in a presynaptic way to modulate uh, that end effect of dopamine and some other neurotransmitters. Yes. So this is a, Cobenfi is a great medication for patients who aren't getting efficacy out of their current treatment with schizophrenia. But because this is a new mechanism of action, and we have to think of the new pathways that this is working through, instead of working through D2 receptors and the blockade on a postsynaptic um, mechanism, this is working presynaptic through cholinergic pathways. And so when we're modulating cholinergic pathways, we have to be careful around acetylcholine anything that's affecting acetylcholine. And this particular agent has an anticholinergic built into it to help modulate some of the side effects, the cholinergic side effects that this medication can give. And so you have to be very cautious around prescribing other anticholinergics on top of this medication. And in in the realm of schizophrenia, a lot of patients end up on anticholinergic medications that are... Um, used to prevent other diseases or manage other uh, conditions. And so we have to be careful not adding on multiple anticholinergics for this particular uh, medication regimen. So that's one thing to watch out for. Um, and, you know, this is an FDA indicated um, monotherapy treatment for schizophrenia. Uh, and so these individuals may need to do a switch type treatment. There are other studies um, being done, and I hope in the future we'll have some more direction around how to use these agents, potentially in combination with other antipsychotics. Uh, but for right now, it's monotherapy. So this particular medication for Co uh, Cobenfi is dosed twice daily. So that's one caveat uh, to the medication. It's dosed twice daily and it's actually not given with food. So you want to have it on an empty stomach. We think the opposite. And many times when, when people have GI side effects, we say take something with food. This is the exact opposite because their uh, potential for cholinergic side effects can come up. This medication has an anticholinergic built in called trospium. And the metabolism of trospium actually drastically reduces if you add it with food. So that's one caveat for patients with schizophrenia is making sure that we have a medication regimen when they're not taking it with foods, either one hour before a meal, two hours after, and then making sure we're not mixing with a bunch of anti other anticholinergics. And there are two uh, antipsychotics that do have some anticholinergic properties um, to be aware of, and that's uh, 
olanzapine and quetiapine. So some things to keep in consideration, but it's absolutely Optional, optional to be able to switch medications, but what we're looking for is optimizing, optimizing these symptoms that they're experiencing. So these effect sizes for this particular uh, agent actually are very robust. And so when you're looking for optimizing someone's treatment and having a little bit more hope around what we can accomplish with symptoms, this may be the medication option for you to choose. I believe really understanding the neurobiology of the cholinergic pathways, because our brains have been thinking postsynaptic D2 receptors for the last 70 years. So we really have to shift our thinking and understand the underlying neurobiology of what's happening on the cholinergic pathways. Once you really understand the cholinergic pathways, you'll be able to prescribe this medication with confidence and ease and know how it will affect your patient. No, I think it's I think it's just an exciting time, and this is uh, there's several uh, muscarinic modulators that are being researched, and hopefully we'll see additional uh, molecules being added to our our tool belt. And I'm just excited for what's to come in the next five to ten years. I think we can really change or affect patients with schizophrenia in a much more positive way than we have been, and, and do our due diligence for them. There are some PAM uh, modulators, so uh, positive allosteric modulators, which work on muscarinic agents just a little bit differently with a, a slight different mechanism of action than M4, M1 agonists. And there's another M4 agonist in uh, development right now. And so this initial um, medication, Covenfi, is working off of M1 and M4 in combination. And it had some really great effects sizes in the clinical trials, but did have some side effects, uh, cholinergic side effects. And so uh, there are some other agents being developed looking at uh, M4 specifically. Uh, can we not necessarily target just M1 and just have M4 uh, and what would happen there? And we're hoping to see some phase three trials uh, results here soon to show us if that does make an effective difference.